obviously bone marrow uh, is an important test. Um, if we just look at the overall plasma cell space, as you just suggested, um, you know, the first question is how important is a bone marrow in the diagnosis of a disease? Um, so a plasma cell disorder, um, certainly it is a uh, part of the definition for, you know, um, myeloma, uh, its definition for MGUS, smoldering myeloma and so forth. And so it can discern um, put a patient in one bucket versus another. So it has importance there. Um, we recently published something um, showing though, if you have a patient who has a presumptive looking uh, just by blood, it looks like it would be a low risk MGUS. There's no crab, there's nothing, there's a small monoclonal protein, it's, it's an IgG. The free, free light chain ratio is, um, is normal. That the likelihood of you actually having myeloma is tiny, tiny, tiny. So, you know, patients who look like low risk MGUS is based on those three criteria I mentioned, or four criteria, um, don't necessarily need a bone marrow biopsy. But once you're thinking, you know, is this a higher risk MGUS or is it a smolder or, or is it a myeloma, then clearly we do need a bone marrow um, because uh, that helps us uh, define uh, the diagnosis. In the AL space, especially, we find that bone marrow plasma cytosis um, is definitely prognostic. Um, so um, what we see is that, uh, you know, the about half of patients with AL amyloidosis have um, fewer than 10% plasma cells. So if you were to just look at their bone marrow, they kind of look MGUS-like. Um, they aren't highly proliferative. It's very low chance that they're going to have high-risk cytogenetics. Um, and that, so in this space, um, the patients that have the higher, pl higher plasma cells um, seem to have a more aggressive plasma cell disorder, and that definitely is prognostic. But the other importance of bone marrow, regardless of the plasma cell disorder um, that we're looking at, is um, the, 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 the risk stratification. So uh, looking at fish or if it's next-gen sequencing or some kind of... Um, uh, sequencing to look at profiles for, for risk patterns, um, those are relevant in terms of prognosis. Um, certainly in the myeloma space, the um, patients with the higher risk cytogenetics, the 414s, the 17Ps, um, it would appear that treatment really is different, uh, you, that if you use um, proteasome inhibition in the 414s and, and even the 17Ps, that's going to give a better outcome, but you can't really get that consistently at this point without a bone marrow biopsy, though there's work looking for um, you know, circul circulating RNA kinds of things, but basically the bone marrow is still the standard there. Um, the 1114 translocation, again, is very important, both in the myeloma space and the amyloid space, um, in part for each, is that uh, venetoclax, uh, which is a BCL2 inhibitor, is um, uh, those patients who carry that translocation uh, yeah, seem to be those patients who uh, get responses um, with venetoclax. And so that's promising in both spaces, uh, both the myeloma space and the amyloid space and ongoing research is there. In terms of the amyloid space, 11 patients with translocation 1114 uh, seem to not uh, do as well if they don't get some kind of alkylator in their regimen. So again, bone marrow is important there. So that's kind of in the diagnosis space, but then when you move, uh, and prognosis, but then when you move to the treatment space, which I touched upon, um, but looking for minimal residual disease. So um, for a long time, um, the bone marrow has been an integral part of myeloma response. Um, and the, uh, tests which are required to uh, to call you know response is um, are, are getting better and so we get into the whole you know MRD kind of space minimal residual disease um, and so that in myeloma obviously is uh, very important in terms of prognosis and the um, uh, 
you know, the minimum these days is a 10 to the minus fifth kind of flow cytometry. Um, but certainly going a little deeper uh, with 10 to the minus six um, next gen sequencing is pretty exciting and interesting. Um, these different technologies haven't really fully been integrated in um, management decisions per se, but they clearly are prognostic and clinical trials are ongoing, uh, trying to inform, uh, you know, can you make treatment decisions? Can you stop maintenance, for example, if someone is, you know, truly MRD negative? Um, can you, um, you know, just alter your therapy based on that. And then the other direction is important in terms of, okay, well, some, what if somebody's MRD, they become MRD negative, and then you happen to do another bone marrow and they become MRD positive. Is that truly, you know, indication to treat? I would say at this point, no. Um, but these are all really important, interesting types of questions. In the amyloid space, the bone marrow um, had been part of um, response criteria, complete response, up until 2012 when um, the decision was made to just really focus on the blood and the urine tests and, and not require the bone marrow. Um, the, the thinking behind that is definitely changing, although you, get, you go a really long way with just just um, blood and urine. Um, right now, it appears that you know bone marrow, again, using these um, high resolution types of bone marrow techniques um, do make a difference, especially in terms of progression-free survival. Most of those studies so far um, looking at MRD positivity in the AL space haven't really shown an overall survival benefit yet, but it may be uh, a limitation of follow-up. Now that said, you know, where will blood mass spec fit into that? And will it somehow, you know, in some patients be beating out the bone marrow? Um, we'll see. I think in some patients it may, but overall, you know, 10 to the minus six um, in the bone marrow is, is a pretty high bar or low bar, whatever, <laughs> to get to, to, you know, see if the blood mass spec can, can achieve that. But time will definitely tell. And it's a really interesting area of exploration.